first of all, it's it's finally good to e meet you <laughs> after all this time. Same, definitely. <laughs> I I'm, I feel so honored. <laughs> what? No, I'm the one who's supposed to be feeling honored. You're the, Why? the oh. <laughs> you're the <laughs> Oprah of Mar, not me. <laughs> hey, but I I wouldn't have gotten far. Um, I, I thank everybody. I, I really do who's helped me or promote me or retweet or did something because um, I wouldn't have made it without them. You know, I still have a long journey, but I'm just thankful. <laughs> oh, well, support is support, support, very, support. And I, 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 I am happy to support you because I love your content. <laughs> oh, thank you. Just by watching, you know, the things you do on um, you know, Twitter and Instagram, and it's like, okay, I see people, okay, I see people like me, or look like me, or close to look like me, <laughs> to, you know, just give support and back each other up, so, I am, That's what I, I'm, I'm, here still, I'm just, I, I know you're honored, but I am, I am. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I had contact you, because I thought it'd be fun to do creatures, Cre you know, creature features, and it could be anything. Mm -hmm. She is amazing. I, you know, she's on Instagram, Twitter, and, um, you know, Facebook, all these things. And she's promote horror. She promotes so many things. She helps promote other people. I see that quite often. You, you, you're everywhere, girl. You're everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> it's, it's hard, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. tough. You have to stay on it every day you really yeah. do mm -hmm. in order just to to get noticed and you know yeah and, it, and you know it sucks like that because you know people like us don't don't very often get seen and you know i i feel like i have sort of a responsibility to make my community more seen because it like really bugs me man like it yeah. bugs me that i scroll down my feed and I don't see any people that look like me. And when I do find them, when I found you and Bobby Torres and, and Kai and Girl That's Scary and, and, and all the rest of us Black horror peeps, I was like, oh, finally. And so <laughs> now I'm like, I have you guys in like mm -hmm. my little pocket and I just, I, I want to see you guys blow up, you know? And, and there's so many horror content creators out there and I just, we need a little more flavor, you know? And mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean just me. Like, I want it for the industry as a whole. So, you know, if, if I can bring, you know, six or seven content creators along with me on my journey, then it's like, it's all good here. I found you from Dead Me. That's how I yeah. found you. And then as soon as I found you, I was like, okay, it's not just me and her. There has to be more than us. I did a little digging. And also that was right around the time. And I didn't have crap to do just sitting at home and at the height of the pandemic. And, and a Bloody Disgusting started retweeting a bunch of other Black Horror creators. And I'm like, oh, my God, all these people. And now, mm -hmm. then I did my, my five Black Horror creators that you should follow. And then when I posted that, when I published that, I probably found 10 other ones. And then I did mm -hmm. the next one. And then I found 15 more of us. And, and so mm -hmm. it really goes to show it's just that one promo that you need. And then you'll find people that support you. And it's, mm -hmm. I think it's very... Uh, it's very obvious how much us black horror peeps give a crap because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all love with all of us. And it's that like kind of telekinetic, like I see you and I know that you see me and we're here together. Mm -hmm. So like, thank goodness right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, let, let's get started with this. The whole creature features. Yeah. Um, God, there were so many themes I could have went with, but I just, I don't know why I just picked creatures. I just thought it would be an awesome thing. So, um, obviously we have a time limit, so this time I'm prepared. <laughs> okay. So I can narrow it down to, to, to three. Um, I won't say they're favorites just cause like you said before, there's, yeah, there's, there's so yeah. many, it's like, how could I, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I really went with three that are that I've watched recently that are like fresh in my memory, <laughs> but they're up there. But you invited me, so you please go first. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go first. I have to write them down because I forget. So I'm gonna, gosh, I'm gonna choose Super 8 for my first one. Oh, yes! Wait, was yes! that on your list? 
<laughs> okay, it was not the- my it was on my list, but then I took it off of my list because <laughs> I was <laughs> I took it off of my list because I know there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of negative things that go around on the internet about that movie, but I'm so glad that you picked that one because I I felt for like the longest time that I was like the only one who liked that movie. Like I remember going to see it in the theater (laughs) and I came out and like, I felt like everybody around me was like, "Eh," and I was like, yo, that was the coolest thing. (laughs) (laughs) oh that movie is great i didn't see it in a theater uh because like you said i heard like if he this it looks like a remake of this and all that so i it took a while for me to watch it and when i finally sat down and watched it i was like oh my goodness this is really really good the the actors the child actors were just spot on and had kid problems with adult situations (laughs) yes but it is a creature feature. Uh, it doesn't matter where the creature came from, as long as it's a creature. But it, it definitely reminded me of, you know, of these kids having to deal with at home situation. And now the world is at stake. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you do at that point? So basically it's about these group of kids who are trying to make a somewhat of a horror film. Um, we, we're not sure exactly if it's a zombie film or they're going to change it or whatnot, but um, so they needed to make this film and they're using Super 8 film. And they're at some kind of, uh, you know, an old, you know, for trains and stuff. And all of a sudden we just see like this truck <laughs> burn down and it smashes into a train. And that train scene alone was unbelievable yeah i mean i mean these kids <laughs> running for their lives and trains are the train cars are just flying over their heads and i'm like wow okay the stakes <laughs> are high it was a long, yeah it was a long scene though for that train to crash and settle down it was it took a while and mm-hmm. thank goodness none of them got seriously injured but um, there are spoilers. <laughs> there may be some spoilers, just let people know. But um, definitely the relationship we see as with the friends, we see the relationship um, with Joe and his dad. I think his name is Joe. I always write their names down, which is, you know, a <laughs> mess up. But with his dad and you see that relationship, you see it's, you know, they're having problems with communication. And it's just like, these kids are having re- adult si- situations and they're trying to handle friendships and strange things are happening. Aliens are coming from somewhere. I, I don't know. It, it is, it is, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but JJ Abrams who directed this and um, also wrote it. No, he was, it's just like a love letter to Steven Spielberg. (laughs) It definitely was. You could see E.T. on this. You could see the Goonies on this. You see all of that on there. So Mm -hmm. it has a moral story. I even cried at the end. I cried too. I I don't like to admit that because I don't like, I'm not (laughs) not one of those people that will go after the movie that makes me cry. Like Mm -hmm. if I, if I have even an inkling that I might cry during this film, I probably will avoid it just because that's not my cup of tea Uh but i cried i cried in this one and i didn't feel bad about it either (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean that i think the relationship with his dad and then you find out what happened to the mom and why he has such a hatred towards the neighbor and I felt like I was that kid. I felt like I was his son that lost a parent and didn't know how to communicate with the living parent you're with now. Mm-hmm. And because he was still grieving, he was still angry and everybody's angry in this. And, and he carried something with him. And when you saw the moment where, you know, throughout the film, he had to save, you know, save his friends, save the world, it seemed like. And it was a decision to, let you know let them do whatever they were going to do with whatever creature that was or let it go i mean Mm -hmm. it was like a moral decision you don't know what this thing is you don't know what it's doing 
But once he got into the place where the alien was like hiding or whatever it is, um, he saw that it was no danger. It was just misunderstood. And he mm -hmm. was also misunderstood. So he knew those feelings of someone not listening. Mm -hmm. So he just needs someone to listen. And that moment where he, that locket, that locket meant so much through the film. He had yeah. to let, that's when he knew he had to let it go. But how it was let go, how the everything um, resolved itself, I was bawling. The only part, okay, I was bawling already, but the part when he grabbed, when the, when the thing grabbed him and he felt uh -huh. what it was feeling and he said, I know how that feels. Oh my God, my <laughs> eyes about the water right now. <laughs> the water my eyes. I don't want to mess that up. That was the exact <laughs> moment. That was it. That was the moment. I that just knew that your heart feeling. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely a film to watch. Definitely. <laughs> yes. And for anyone in the chat, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention because I was just like so deep. And I was like really watching it in my head as you're explaining. But for There's anyone like... who hasn't seen this movie, just, yeah. you know, you don't have to go to Rotten Tomatoes for this one. It's okay to mm -hmm. avoid that. Um, you know, make your own judgment. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. you got two weirdos on the screen right now who are freaking out <laughs> over this one. So it, it means something. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish more people would, would see this film because I, you know, people hold ratings so highly. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I really think it takes somebody who just really gives a crap about the genre period, um, mm -hmm. to just disregard that fact. And, you know, people miss out on a lot of really good movies and a lot of good, really good moments like this that way. Um, and so please, please watch this movie. I think a, a good follow up for Super 8 would be, I chose Cloverfield, the first Cloverfield movie. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> I chose this one because... I just, I love a disaster movie, and mm -hmm. when when creature features in disaster movies go like this, I'm a very happy gal, and um, this one hits, it really hits home. I think it's, well, I also, I live in New York, if you didn't know oh, this Oh, okay, okay. And so, <laughs> <laughs> it really did hit home. <laughs> it literally, it literally hit home, and um, and you know for for me this one was scary because it was you know when i see horror films that take place in my city it just or in any you know in any city that you know whoever is watching lives in it just hits a little different um <laughs> when you can see like you know i've been there or like i know that corner and you know something immediately blows up or somebody gets murdered right on the corner and you've probably <laughs> been there maybe like three weeks ago and it's different <laughs> But um, yeah. I really applaud this movie's use of, um, what is this called? Uh, 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 found footage or um, the shakiness. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the handicap. Yeah, found footage. Yeah. 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 They did um, a very good job with that. Yes. And sometimes I'm skeptical about found footage films, but this one was just phenomenal. And um, I, I love me an alien invasion, and I'm sure that has already been set on the table and i've been talking to you for maybe like 15 minutes already but i i love that movie and it's the characters annoy you um mm -hmm. the way that the city reacts to an alien coming down and just obliterating everything is frustrating um and it's the frustration that really like really brings me into this film because your protagonists aren't really heroes at all. Um, <laughs> in, in fact, I really kind of hated the main character. I'm, I'm spacing on his name. I, sh I should have written it down, but um, he's looking for his girlfriend um, in the midst of New York City, practically blowing up because of an invasion. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I can't say that anybody would be so bold, um but he's still a man and he still makes stupid mistakes and <laughs> but it's just his like the world is crumbling while he's just like i need to find my girlfriend man i really need to find my girlfriend <laughs> and doing it in like all the wrong ways uh is frustrating because then it makes you think about if you were in that situation how you would handle it and that being said i have no idea how i would handle that <laughs> especially as a new york native and um 
I I have had a nightmare, and I don't usually have nightmares about the movies that I watch. Um, but I did have a nightmare about this. And spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen Cloverfield, but there is a scene where our um, our protagonists are walking through the subway, and um, during the the obliteration of the city, and um, so they're trying to find find their way. So, you know, from point A to point B, and they use the uh, they use underground, and so they're walking along the the train tracks, and um, they switch the the camera, the handy cam to like a night cam, so then it switches to UV vision, and the terror that I just felt for them walking on the train tracks. As somebody who takes the train daily, um, and as soon as he switched the our main character, um, or not the main character, the the handyman, he was like the sidekick, yeah. I guess. The mm-hmm. funny, the comedic <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and he he switches on the night mode, and you just see all these kind of spider looking mm-hmm. things on the ceiling, and it just looks so authentic to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever taken a New York City subway. But yeah, if you would have, you would not be surprised if you saw something like this looking back at you. Because, you, you know, any New York... <laughs> Wait, native, in real life? In real yeah, life? <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> I know I have, um, I know I have voice in your head. I know that he is a New York native, so maybe he has some insight here. But the way that New York City rats look at you in the subway is on some other ish. We're to take the train home tonight at 8 p.m. And, like, saw that. It, it wouldn't stick out at all to me at all wow. and just <laughs> it was that creepy um and i don't know for, I've, I've had so many horror stories just in the subway just thinking about them about how like it's a perfect location because it's gross and here's me just a new york native just complaining about the subway to you at this point but <laughs> it's gross and that's where most of my greatest fears come from and to see just that nasty that one pan to the back with the spider things it was it was quite disgusting um but i i love that movie it's it's so honest and and flawed, but in a great way. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's genuine because these characters, it's, you know, the classic film where you're like, why did you do that? Like, no, come on. You know, and, and of course the, the monsters are, are freaking everything, but um, <laughs> I, I could go on for forever, but let's, let's get on to the next one. Okay. So you're number okay. two. Let's do it. Man, we could keep going just about the subways. <laughs> It's scary as hell, man. <laughs> the next one I'm going to talk about is so cute and fun. Um, it is Eight-Legged Freaks. <laughs> oh, speaking of little spider <laughs> things. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zena's um, here. Oh, Hi, yeah. Zena. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to choose Eight-Legged It has everything on there. And... It was so fun, you know, David Arquette, you know, he wanted to do a monster film. He, he said that I, I couldn't wait to do one. And so finally he did one and he came with everything arachnid <laughs> he could think of. And I wrote down the spiders, what the spiders were. So, okay, before I say that, so basically it's a story about this little boy and his friend um, who, who collects spiders, but at the same time in this little mining town, you know, people dumping toxic waste. Well, you know what happens. <laughs> toxic waste and spiders. <laughs> it's like, oh, that old chestnut. <laughs> so I don't know how fast or, or, or they got huge pretty quickly. That was, that was some toxic waste. But these spiders wouldn't just a little big. They were big as houses. They had personalities. They had the queen. They had soldiers. I mean, it was just pure fun, over the top. It, it, it's such a great film. I would say definitely watch it. But I had to write down what were the spiders, because it tells you what spiders was in it. They all look nasty. But um, some of these, um, I, I didn't write down scientific names because I can't say, you know, I barely could talk English, let alone scientific. I'm not, I'm not going to correct <laughs> so, you. <laughs> so, um, 
I thought it was important to know what spiders we were looking at. If you if you've seen the movie or if you thinking about it, so they had jumping spiders, which you definitely saw. They had mm-hmm. orb weavers, um, and and I, they're in there. <laughs> they're in the movie. They had black widows, uh, oh, cool. tarantula. They had tarantulas, but they were very various tarantulas. And I have the names of the various tarantulas. And believe me, they're what I saw in the film did not look like. What I was <laughs> um, they had trapdoor spiders, and I think if you remember that when they were running in the streets, they were just getting snatched in. Yes. And um, those are actually scary. Though I've seen a trapdoor spider, they're they're not cute. Then they have the Australian funnel web, and they have spitting spiders. Oh, great. <laughs> so for the tarantulas, these are the names of which I thought was hilarious. Um. They have a, go- a Goliath bird eater. So these are <laughs> real. These are real. They are big enough to capture birds. I'm that glad makes me they're, feel so they're in the rain. I think they're in the rainforest somewhere. <laughs> they <know>. have <laughs> a, a pink foot. I didn't see any pink, pink feet there. Uh, mm-hmm. Pink foot, Mexican red knee, and a, Chile- a Chilean red. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if these are spiders or are they going out tonight? I mean, they got their, you know, their toes done, their knees done. They're out, they go hang done. out. <laughs> <laughs> they are, you know, I mean, pink foot and pink toe. They got their nails done <laughs> before they started <laughs> toe people. I don't know. I just thought it was funny as hell to talk about. <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's hilarious. And I never thought about, you know, I mean, I always thought of them as just like giant spiders and that's really scary or eight legged freaks and not, you know, this is the kind of spider that they are. So cute. It's so cute. You have to, you just have to watch it. <laughs> this chat is crazy right now. <laughs> I have a feeling that you guys are not cool with spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, you said spider gaze. What set for you from? Cause pink knee. <laughs> <laughs> for real, pink knees and pink toes pink and pink foots and I mean, I don't this have time like to get terrifying. close enough to to say, oh, he got a pink foot. <laughs> no way. It wouldn't be no. me. It would not no. be me. No way. Definitely. <laughs> so, w- what is your number two? Okay, so I'm going for my number two is the host, the South Are Korean. Are we on number two? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what year is it? No, yeah. Okay, well, okay, I'm, you're on number two. We're on number I just two. My number okay. two. Yeah, because I so did first. See, I got confused. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It's been so many years. Um, <laughs> my number two is the host, the South Korean film. I think it came out like 2006. And I have not seen it. Oh, shame on me. Oh, wait. Oh. I? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. It's in Korean. I believe it's on Shudder. If somebody in the chat can correct me. Um, but it's a great one. Like, if you enjoyed Cloverfield, you will probably enjoy this one. Uh, if okay. you don't mind watching subtitles. I know some people are iffy about that. Oh, I don't mind. Okay, I good. don't mind. <laughs> um, but um, yet again, look at me being so predictable. It's another, um, it's another, or I guess it's not even an invasion, but um, this monster, this giant, uh, it's a quad, oh, Girl That's Scary says this on Hulu. Thank you. Um, it's this giant aquatic monster, and it's basically terrorizing Seoul, South Korea. Um, and it's it's just as classic as it gets. Um, we don't know what this monster is. It's it it's I don't know what the word for that is. Um, but the kind of animal that li- can live on both land and in water, um, like a toad, I guess. Um, but but it's scary. Mm. And um, I I have in my mind, and well, CGI monsters are one thing. It, I. You know, if, if you look too closely, you can snap yourself out of the horror, but um, let's see. But the, the 
the scene that I have burned in my mind, and I, I won't go too far because I really want you to watch this film um, and anyone else, spoilers, but um, I have this, this scene burned into my mind where um, people are, are at the waterfront, they're picnicking, they're, yes, Arc Max is a Godzilla type ass. Exactly, my brother, exactly. <laughs> Um, they're enjoying themselves, and there's, you know, something cocooning itself under the bridge, and, you know, people gather, like, hey, what is that? I don't know. Um, it's a dolphin. It's a whale. I don't know. They start throwing things at it to try to get it, its, its attention. Everybody's looking here, and as soon as our protagonist switches his vision to look this way, he sees the 20-ton crazy-looking monster just swooping people up. And the scariest thing about this monster is that um, it's not so much of a destruction causing buildings collapsing like Cloverfields. Um, it's not really the, I'm just gonna snatch you up right now and eat you whole with only one chew like Jurassic Park type thing. It's I'm gonna snatch you up. If you die of natural causes, that's your own fault. <laughs> but I'm gonna push you in this ditch and I'll get back to it later. Like eight-legged freaks, like spiders are one thing because we know spiders make webs and then they catch their prey in their webs or, you know, however else they do. Some, you know, as clearly some spiders take a different route. Um, <laughs> but but we know that. And But things nesting, I got that weird tingle spine and uh it's, it's a mix of debris that you've collected from outside and bodily fluids to keep your <laughs> exactly <laughs> and in in monsters that make me do exactly what you just did right there <laughs> that's that's how i know that this is my my type of movie you also see and it's, it's also it hurts a little bit in here because you you do see a uh, a, a family of three generations get ripped apart in the chaos of this. Um, mm. And then there's that other thing where just the frustration, and I don't know why I like frustrating myself so much. I don't know. I can't <laughs> it. But it's that frustration of, you know, everyone is acting a certain way to this crisis, and you're just like, this is not the way to handle it. Like, there is an unknown thing in the water it might be a dolphin it might be a whale it might not be it's, it hasn't been moving i don't know what it is <laughs> and, and your first reaction is to throw cans at it it throws crap into the water until it gets upset and then well, it doesn't sound right <laughs> yeah it doesn't, it doesn't sound right but it's you know the classic you can't trust humanity in when the apocalypse or the invasion eventually happens and i guess um, not <laughs> no, absolutely no, ma'am. Absolutely not. Um, but but another one, and I I think the acting in that film was phenomenal. Um, a lot of people give the movie a little bit of uh, a little bit of crap because of CGI monsters, but it was also two thousand and six, and for what we got, I think they hit all the right spots. And I I think the host is probably up there. It, well, it should be, in my opinion. Um, but people, you know, sometimes like to turn away from from foreign films. But it's it's up there with a very scary monster design, if I may say. Um, having something semi-aquatic that is equal equally as terrifying on land as it is in the water, it, it just does it for me. And um, yeah, <laughs> man, this one it, it was it was another good one. If you're into you know destruction and if you're maybe a kaiju fan, you like Godzilla and and all that type of stuff, then go for this one. I'm definitely I'm gonna, gonna have to. to. I'm gonna have to check that out. It I, sounds... And I would love my DMs are open for you for your thoughts when you're done. Of course, <laughs> I'm a fan of foreign horror. I I find it. There were some I've watched had me screaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, yeah, if you're not into reading, um, you know, people are going to say, no, nah, it's not for me. But sometimes there's not a lot of dialogue it, because they know you have to read. They know um, it, it's going all over the world, so they can't have too much. They can't just talk forever. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of visuals. Um, so uh, I, I get it. I'm still going to have, I, I think I'm going to have to check that out. Mm -hmm. So Please. 
my number one. Uh, it is one of my favorites, but it's not my number one. Um, it's a fun, I, I thought it was fun. I saw it in a the theater. I saw it twice in a the theater, meaning I sat there, watched it, and sat there again and watched another one. I never left. <laughs> That's how you know. Love, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I met some of the cast members. I interviewed one of them. He oh, is. I think I know the movie you're about to say. I'm not going to say it. Way, it. <laughs> but I, I did take a picture with both of them. It was so cute. So the suspense, suspense. What is it? What is it? Okay. So it is. I don't know if you got it right though, because that's kind of tricky. <laughs> Okay, but see. it is Starship Troopers. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that film. Yes, I met Casper uh, Van Dien. I did interview him when I started my Nerdtastic Girl blog. He is hilarious and way out there. Like, not in a bad way. Because uh -huh. in the movie, he's kind of you know, tough guy, yeah, reserved. He's reserved and he's but in person, he's like, he, he is like, where is the party started? <laughs> Fun bug movie. Um, these bugs is more vicious than anything I've ever seen. They do not take prisoners. Um, <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> um, yes, when that movie came out, in 1997, yes, I was in the theater. <laughs> 1997, um, and they were still around, thanks to the COVID. We all the way we are right now. But I miss the theaters. I miss the theaters. But in 97, I sat in there. That movie, that theater was packed. It was sold out. And surprisingly, that film got a bad rap. But in the early, late, in the mid 90s, after Jurassic Park. Um, and there was a lot of CG films starting to come out. We have Spawn, we, you know, Twister. Those were all coming out that time, and they, you know, CG was fairly new. And this film was mostly CG. Um, they're in space. Um, I mean, some of the stuff is just, you know, ridiculously, you know, over the top. Um, it was like an all-star cast. I mean, who, who was in there? It was like, you know, obviously Casper Van Dina. There was Dina Meyer, Denise Richards, Jake Busey, and Neil Patrick Harris. Yes, Doogie Howser, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many, but that's the only me. I, guess I only got that much time to write. <laughs> um, that movie is fun. It's crazy. It's Rico's Roughnecks. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is, it's just a great film, and I'm surprised it got such a bad rap. Um, I didn't know that it had such this negative connotation. I, I, I didn't think so either. I'm like, oh, this film's great, and I started reading reviews. Now I start to read things. <laughs> and I read a little bit, and I was like, what? But it's based on a book, and a lot of people were saying it didn't go with the book that came out in 1959 and wow. that book wow. during that time was during the whole you know a nuclear movies and books were coming out at that time but it's definitely a fun fun movie to watch definitely have to see starship troopers you know if the effects are now if you watch them i mean there we've seen some movies with effects that look like the person is actually right here <laughs> yeah but so in this movie, it's, uh, you can be like, eh, <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. Just have fun. It, it, it's just a good film to have fun. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my number one, Starship Ooh. Troopers. For all you bug people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, you see that brain bug? <laughs> it has that, whatever that was. <laughs> It looks like a butt crack, and it just comes out. <laughs> but anyway, you got to see it if you have it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now it's like in my mind. Oh, my God. <laughs> Watch that again. It you did. That it's, like it's, it's like, you know, it's just this thing coming out. And you're like, what? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, voice in your head says, but can we talk about how low-key progressive it was with the gender-neutral showers? 
critique uh, on military and sex society. I know everybody was with everybody. It didn't matter. See, at that point, nobody cared. But it, yeah. it's such a great film. <laughs> well, I went backwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so this is technically my number three. Oh, but <laughs> okay. um, Death still still a great movie. Um, okay. Well, okay. First, I will say I was going I was going to say the thing because it is one of my favorite movies, and I also wanted to bring that up because I know you love the thing, and I wanted to show face for you, but also <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go a little bit newer because we we really drill in the classics. Um, mm -hmm. But Attack the Block is. I don't think that movie got enough credit. And um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it was um, John Boyega's claim to fame, um, who is now fan in Star Wars. Um, he's just phenomenal. And um, finally, a movie with his natural British accent. But it's, it's oh, okay. basically, um, it's another, yet another alien invasion. And um, it's about these kids. Um, it's a group of... Uh, of uh, lower class kids living in uh, projects somewhere in in the UK. I'm I'm not exactly sure where, um, but it's a British film, and um, so yeah, it's a bunch of kids from the projects, and I I like it because this one they're heroes. The, in this mm. movie, they are definitely heroes. Um, okay, and you know it's all just like Super Eight. It's always great when when child actors like you know really do it you know there's there's a lot of uh cheesy child acting but you know that's not on them they're kids but you know mm -hmm. good child actors really can make a movie feel um mm -hmm. very genuine and so you get these really a group of really genuine kids um and you really feel you know black culture come out of them there um there's maybe a, a one or two white kids but you're really feeling um the the authenticity of them living in the projects them mm. them being you know struggling with their day-to-day -day lives um mm -hmm. them just having to deal with violence in their own immediate community and you know living in a world where you have enemies and you have people out to get you um just people mm. and then a game changer happens and you know aliens start falling from the sky and i really loved the um the design of these aliens because they they kind of look like big bears um mm. and they're, <laughs> yeah they're like big like um what's the breed of dog the golden retriever like really fluffy ones but all black and it's so black that i i think it's called that vanta black um, that's like so black that you can't even see it. It's just, <laughs> it looks like they were like cut and paste out of the frame. And then these just oh. giant jaws. They're basically just like big balls of fur with giant neon oh, wow. jaws and dripping. And, you know, it, it's scary. It's, it's, they're kind of like a pack of wolves and, and mm -hmm. they operate that way too. And, <clears throat> but it's just a great um, coming of age story for all these young kids taking back their block to say um and you know dealing with having to deal with prejudices from the outside people of upper class looking down on them looking at them as criminals when really they're the ones just trying to defend their immediate community from fucking aliens you know um and it, it really shy it like switch flips the script um and it 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 lets these underrepresented these young um these young kids with you know not issues to say but a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of social constrictions around them um become the heroes for once and mm -hmm. going you know them mustering up the courage to to protect their projects and and i i think it is a in my opinion a, a very flawless black horror film um, mm. it's also just cause John Boyega, he's just phenomenal. And you know, it, when child actors just do it, they just really do it. And it just feels, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and, and it feels like all of those struggles that, you know, most people had 
just mm-hmm. being young and being hormonal and trying to figure <laughs> out the world and and where mm-hmm. you fit into all this mess as you know somebody who lives in projects or you know somebody who doesn't have friends who look like them or struggles with you know abuse at home all those kind of things mm-hmm. um just find yourself and it's crazy to think that they're finding themselves in the midst of an alien invasion and are still mustering up the courage to protect people that might not necessarily protect them back. Um, oh, wow. We get good it, stories from that. Like yeah. I, I, stories like that, um, they go far. They they keep going. It makes you think. They're very cerebral. <laughs> yeah. Just the way you describe them, it's like I didn't think of it that way. So when I watch them, it, it feels like one of those films you can't be doing anything. You have to sit and oh, watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you want to be on this journey. And you're, I mean, you will definitely pick this up on watching because you were able to pick that up from Super 8. And, and I think if, you know, if you were, if you have any ounce of emotion as a person, <laughs> whatever, um, you, you can, you can pick that up and you know there's there's layers to horror and it's not all about let's scare you right away but you know let's bring a little bit of our real life horror to it so you know people can relate and there might not always be you know nearly invisible zombies that act like packs of wolf alien kind of things <laughs> down in the community but there uh-huh. might be times where you could be you know feel scared that way and feel like i i need to protect these people that way and Mm -hmm. and that's scary because you know real life is scary man and when you connect those two it's just like oh oh man (laughs) yeah (laughs) definitely um real life is scary and then if you add on some giant uh bushy black hair with teeth uh tarantulas coming from everywhere a giant Forget arachnoid, <laughs> some, slither, some slithering thing that was in the water could live on the land. Right, uh, if the you just crack. grab all these, <laughs> grab all these things that we just said and put it all in one scenario, we're all doomed. <laughs> yes, but, exactly. Uh, but it, it'd even be even worse if you make it happen in New York because everything happens to New York. <laughs> No. I was even thinking about moving to New York, but now after you talk about them rats, <laughs> the biggest rat you get used to them. I get used you to them. <laughs> I'll be like, "What's up, buddy?" <laughs> you wave it back. <laughs> Since you're into the whole rat thing, have you? I don't know if you ever seen it before we go, but um, it's called Food of the Gods. Have you ever no. seen that? Okay. <laughs> Watch Food of the Gods. It's an old film, but there's rats in it. <laughs> and these rats, uh, they're not your New York rats. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm What's it called that. again? Food of the Gods. Okay, I'm writing that down. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. But um, thank you. Thank you so much. This was so fun. This is so fun. We have to do this again. Creature Features. I mean, we pulled from everywhere, from the skies, from the waters, and it all leads up to appreciation of horror, no matter what creature it is. (laughs) I wish you great success. Uh, Keep doing what you're doing. And thank you so much for bringing people to me. I, I I I don't want to get emotional. I do get emotional. That's it's okay. <laughs> I love so it much. much. <laughs> but I, I will continue to send people your way because you have awesome content and people need to see it. But uh, yeah. But Until before we go, time. I have to say this is my cat. She just wanted to be in the frame for some reason. This hi. is Clove. This is say hi, Clovis. Yes, yeah, she was named after the cat from Sleepwalker. Yes, <laughs> hi, Clovis. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, but anyway, thank you so much. Until next time, <laughs> you have a great one. Creature features, you guys. Make sure you watch thank these movies. You. Thanks, everyone, for watching. <laughs>